Clash of the Titans 3D. Well, 3D. It was apparently added at the last moment, and it really shows. While I didn't mind that it barely played up to the camera, you know, when they throw things directly at the viewer, it still would have been nice if they had used it just a little bit more. Before I go any further in this, I should say I have not watched the 1981 original, and I don't have the Perseus myth memorized. So if you're looking for a comparison, this ain't it. This is directed by Louis Leterrier, who I understand is a fan of the original, which might be why he, as far as I understand, copied things directly from it that it imported from other sources, like the Kraken is from Norse mythology. I've been pretty happy with what I've seen of Le Terrier's work thus far, that being in addition to this, The Incredible Hulk and the first Transporter movie. And other than casting Liv Tyler as Betty Ross, he hasn't really made any huge mistakes or odd choices in the films that I've seen of him, anyway. I'm not saying Liv Tyler is a bad actress, I'm saying she's not Betty Ross. While none of the three are, like, amazing, I would still say that he manages to engage, excite, and entertain us. The action is a lot of fun. It's big without being overwhelming, there's plenty of it without it being overstimulating, and while some of the bits are very clearly put there just to inject some action, he gets away with it pretty well, and it remains fun. The plot is fine and moves at a reasonable pace. The dialogue is good, with some exceptions. The acting is great, with very notable exceptions, like Jason Fleming, who overacts really hamily. Is it just me, or is that his thing? He wasn't exactly subtle in The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. The acting talent is largely wasted. The greatest of the actors have very little screen time. Neeson and Fines bring their gravitas to their roles, but they really don't get to show it for all that much. The characters are fine, though an awful lot of them aren't really terribly developed, and you really don't get to see the gods all that much. This has high production values, and the designs are largely great, other than that really stupid looking beard that they hid Danny Houston behind, and a couple of other exceptions. The film looks quite good, if not outright stunning, and one reviewer said that it's better in 2D than 3D, and I can actually kind of imagine that. The CGI is, the CGI is really good, other than Medusa and the horses. Cardinal rule of animation, avoid doing things that are alive and things that exist in the real world. We can tell. Hire a horse trainer. I'm not talking about, you know, when they're flying and stuff. I'm talking about when they're walking. You can't make them look natural. Accept it. There's a little bit of a bonus for anyone who, like me, very much enjoyed The Kingdom from 2007, I think. Al Ghazi is in this movie. I won't give away what he is, but you might recognize him pretty fast, and I enjoyed his character. All in all, if you just focus on the action and the epicness, this may very well satisfy you. If you want a good story based on Greek mythology, I hear that the original from 1981 is actually quite good. That's it for my review. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. Okay, am I the only one who, the moment they saw the sword, thought, Lightsaber! Come on, it's even given to him by Qui-Gon Jinn! The blade lights up, and when he isn't holding it, it's just the hilt, or whatever you call it. Seriously. It was interesting how it kind of went back and forth between the Stygian witches not being able to see anything, and them basically having regular vision. No, we will not tell you anything. We demand a sacrifice. Okay, here's your answer. Hey, you want to know more? 
So after being a major badass, Calibus just kind of leaves for no reason and steers clear of them, seems to follow them, and then finally he attacks when there's only Perseus left. Why exactly? He took out like five guys when he first showed up. When the word Jin was first used, did anyone else think, oh, Andrew Duvoff's gonna show up and this is gonna be a completely different movie from now on? Is it just me or did the Jin that did follow them we never really found out why he did follow them, did we? Anyway, he kind of became the Chewbacca of the group, didn't he? Like, you know, they'd cut to him and he'd do a roar that the audience didn't understand and that was kind of it and it was usually the same roar. How come you never smile? I'll smile when I spit in the face of a god. Failing that, I'll smile when I sacrifice myself for no good reason while we're fighting Medusa. Is it just me, or did that young soldier look like he'd step right out of a fashion magazine or something? There are some things that you see that you wish that you could unwatch. Seeing New Age hippie cloth diaper guy's O face as the Kraken emerged from the water is one of them. And you gotta love how, you gotta love how the Kraken, for dramatic convenience, you gotta love how the Kraken, for the purpose of dramatic convenience, takes a very long time to do this bite towards Andromeda. You know, instead of just doing that, he has to come from all the way over slow sweep, giving Perseus plenty of time to show the disembodied head of Medusa, which for some reason still works. I suppose I can buy that, because maybe it didn't take her being alive to turn anyone into stone, but why are the snakes that make up her hair still alive and hissing? Also, did anyone, also, did anyone else think of a chicken when headless body of her moved around for several seconds before plummeting to its death. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.